Well, uh, thanks, guys. It, it, uh, it really means a lot. You know, I, I'm sure this is very, uh, cliche to say, but I never expected that to happen. You know? That, that, it's, it's really cool, you guys. So, dog dead AVI staring at me really awkwardly and it's making me very uncomfortable, but hey, that's, that's fine. That's fine. So, uh, well, all I can really say is thanks. I'm just gonna keep on doing exactly what I've been doing since 10 subscribers. But, uh, hey. Thanks. Take care, guys. I've always felt disingenuine because I was never open with people about things because I was always hiding things. I was never able to be genuine with people anymore after the fact that I cheated on my girlfriend with people who I didn't realize were even underage in the first place. Now, gaming has been a staple on YouTube ever since the early days on the platform, with the most recognizable content creators during gaming's peak being PewDiePie, Zack Scott Games, and Tobuscus. While some of these guys faded out of relevancy, PewDiePie was a content creator that has been able to stay relevant for a very long time. But today, we aren't taking a look at PewDiePie, but instead, we are going to talk about one of the content creators that he used to collab with. Cryotic or Cry would be one of the content creators that PewDiePie would collab with back in the early 2010s. Cry would never show his face on videos, and his physical appearance was never shown. Cry, during this time, would accumulate over 2 million subscribers on YouTube before his sudden disappearance after this video titled Cry Talks, We Stopped Being Genuine a Long Time Ago, where he admits to cheating on his girlfriend with multiple minors. This video came as a surprise to a lot of his fans because this video came out of nowhere and confused the viewer on what was happening. But we'll look into Cry's video and the allegations later on in this video. First, we have to look at Cry's rise on YouTube and how he got to this point in his career in the first place. Cryotic would create his channel in March of 2006, going by the name Chaotic Monkey. Just think about that. Cry would be on the platform before Google even bought YouTube back in November of 2006. Cry's first video uploaded to the channel would be Cry's theme. That was a 19 second long video that was uploaded in August of 2007, just a year and a half after creating his account. Now, Cry's earlier videos on YouTube wouldn't really be gaming. The first time anyone would actually hear him speak would be in a video titled The Moon Guard Story, where he would read to his viewers. This video would be uploaded in September of 2008 and had comments like, so this was Cry's voice debut, perfect, and you are the best storyteller ever. It wouldn't be until two years after this video in September of 2010 when we would see Cry play his first playthrough where he would play Amnesia the Dark Descent. This series would have 32 parts and would end in October of 2010, a month after starting this series. This series encapsulated what we would later come to expect from Cry with his commentary and entertainment. Cry's next big playthrough would be a game called Nightmare House 2. This series would run for 10 videos. Now, this was the gist of Cry's content, playing indie games and making playthroughs on those games, and during that time, walkthroughs were at an all-time high on YouTube. Now, throughout 2011, Cry would create his Twitch gaming crew with other content creators who you may know as Russ, Scott, and Snake. They would live stream and play games together every Saturday for almost 8 hours a stream. 2012 would be a year where Cry would catch a big break when he would collab with another walkthrough content creator that was on the rise. In July of 2012, Cry would collab with PewDiePie in a video uploaded to PewDiePie's channel called Pewds and Cry Plays Bloody Trap Land Part 1. Hey, I'm jumping on you. What? <laughs> you jerk! It's gonna be a lot of that cry. I'm... Oh, so if you duck, you can't die? That makes no. sense. No, it doesn't. What the hell am I doing? What have you done? <laughs> We're yeah, gently yeah, patting yeah. each other's backs. Wait, I can't. This video today would gain close to 8 million views, and the crossover between the two would gain some exposure onto Cry's channel, with people in the comments really enjoying Cry's personality. This collab would push Cry's channel to over 100,000 subscribers in the summer of 2012, just two years after he started uploading gaming content. Cry would upload this video playing a fan made game celebrating his accomplishment, and would end the video off with this speech. Well, uh. Thanks, guys. It, it uh. It really means a lot. You know, I, I'm sure this is very, uh, cliche to say, but I never expected that to happen. You know? That, that, it's, it's really cool, you guys. So, dog dead AVI staring at me really awkwardly and it's making me very uncomfortable. But hey, that's, that's fine. That's fine. So, uh, well, 
All I can really say is thanks. I'm just gonna keep on doing exactly what I've been doing since 10 subscribers. But, uh... Hey. Thanks. Take care, guys. After hitting 100,000 subscribers, Cry's channel would start to grow pretty quickly. In October, Cry would hit 200,000 subscribers, and then two months after that, in December, Cry would hit 300,000 subscribers, and then would hit 400,000 subscribers in January of 2013. Cry would start to collab with PewDiePie and Cinnamon Toast Ken more often, and this would also boost Cry's channel. But 2013 was also the year where Cry would upload this video titled Cry Talks, I'm Not Your Effing Puppet. Here's a couple seconds of the video. Care anymore. I'm sorry you feel lesser of me as a person because I can't respond to your emails. There are way too many people to humanly respond to and if I don't respond to a few of them they get royally pissed off and start a riot. Fuck that! I apologize for being one fucking person who has flaws of his own. In the description, he would state, I didn't start YouTube to be in my position today, to have the eyes of hundreds of thousands of people on me, wanting me to walk the walk and be some kind of e-celebrity bullshit. I started because I liked video games, not to be some kind of amazing entertainer who is able to be awesome at PR and make everyone happy. I'm not that person. For me, this is where we could see Cry's struggle with negative comments and mental health, but this wouldn't be the first time we would witness Cry go on a tangent against negative comments. It just seems like he didn't know how to handle negativity and he let it bother him to the point where he would boil over and make a video like this one. Even though Cry would go on these tangents, it wouldn't be long before he hit 1 million subscribers in October of 2013, just one year after hitting 100,000 subscribers. But at this time, we would see a change with walkthrough videos. If we look at this graph from Google Trends, and more specifically YouTube search, you can see that the search term walkthrough and playthrough were both on the decline in 2013. Surprisingly, Cry managed to keep his views high throughout 2013 even with the decline in gaming walkthroughs popularity. But it would take Cry about two years to grow an extra 1 million subscribers, so he did see some effect from the loss in popularity. Cry would eventually hit 2 million subscribers in February of 2015. Now this is where Cry feels like he needs a change. In September 20th, 2016, Cry would upload this video titled Cry Talks, Change of Seasons. Here's parts of the video. It's just not really exciting, I guess you could say, for me. To, you know, sit there every night and just record something, put a few hours into it each night, and then just... It, it feels like instead of really doing something unique and, like, I guess creative, I guess you could say, instead I'm just going through the, the, the courses, going through the motions, I guess that's the, the term to say there. That doesn't really feel like how I started this off, where it was something crazy and, I don't know, just expressionable of who I am. I want to move on to doing things I'm actually proud of. So I'm going to, I'm going to finish up what I'm doing here. I'm going to finish up, you know, the deus ex. I'm going to finish up um, all the telltale stuff, all those episodic things. I'm still going to finish them up normally, like I normally would. But all future Let's Plays are going to be done, stream them, and I'll just upload the VOD or something, right? So that's that's just where that's going to be. I want to focus more on showing off games. I want to focus more on giving you an idea of what they are. I want to focus more on having the freedom of editing things in a way that wouldn't really be acceptable on, say, part 27 of this certain Let's Play or something like that. Now this is where Cry would start focusing on his Twitch channel where he would start to live stream full playthroughs because he felt less lonely with an audience watching. I also feel as if he knew that playthroughs on YouTube were slowly dying off and weren't as enjoyable. So the time that he spent playing the game and also editing the game felt like he wasn't getting anything in return with the views. He would start this series called Cry Plays Vampire but would never finish the game and would upload this video explaining why. But uh, yeah, I feel like I should just Come clean and say it. I think I'm going to be ending the vampire playthrough. Purely because I just am not enjoying it. it it's one of those things where I got I to gotta weigh it in my hands here. One. Do I keep playing and just kind of force myself to finish it despite, you know, having very little desire to do so? Now from 2018 to 2019, there would be a big gap with no uploads. From November of 2018 to May of 2019, Cry would take an extended break and would come back to play The Walking Dead. Now even though he didn't say much about his absence throughout the video, he would write about it in his description. 
One of the sentences I want to point out is where Cry speaks about his mental health because we have seen this issue happen in the past due to negative comments that were affecting him. But this seemed worse to the point where he had to take an extended time away from the platform. Eventually, Cry states that he has been getting professional help and that he's been working on his mental health every day. This would be the beginning of the end for Cry and his channel. Cry would eventually upload one of his last Cry Talks videos in August of 2019 where he speaks on his mental health issues and how he was never really able to grow as an individual. Cry states that he will come back better than before, but after this upload, he would only post a couple more times before his controversy. Now we get to the year 2020. Cry uploads twice before June of that year, and fans are wondering what happened to Cry. On June 20th, Cry would upload his last Cry Talks video titled Cry Talks, We Stopped Being Genuine a Long Time Ago. In this video, he would speak on how he cheated on his girlfriend with multiple minors, but this part of the video was so quick and with no explanation that it left fans of Cry extremely confused and the viewer wondering what happened. This video was only 4 minutes long and completely glossed over his sexual misconduct. Eventually, Cry would edit his description of this video and state that he didn't have a physical physical relationship with the minors in question, but he was still at fault. This video came after a Twitter user by the name of Beanie would release a story about how she was manipulated by Cry, but at the time nobody really knew that it was Cry. She would talk about how she was 16 at the time and how the then unknown person she was talking about was 22. She would talk about how she gained feelings for him and he never discouraged them but kept her at arm's length for when he felt lonely. She would say that things changed on her 18th birthday when he said that he couldn't return those feelings towards her because he was messing with his best friend's girlfriend. He would tell her that she was a good backup option and when she was a freshman at college, he told her that he found someone else who she found out was also younger. Beanie would eventually tell him that she could couldn't do this back and forth anymore and his response was that she was just a piece of ass. When she was 24, they reconnected and she was looking for closure or an apology, but she never got that and it wouldn't take long for him to start speaking to her inappropriately again until she got an apology on Twitter. Now I'm not too sure who connected Cry to Beanie's story, but once people found out that it was Cry that was the person she was referring to, a wave of allegations came out from the community that Cry built. There was at least 19 to 20 victims and around 4 or 5 of them were minors at the the time that Cry interacted with them. This would have the community shocked. There would be tweets coming out against Cry for days to come. We would also find out that the person that Cry was talking about to Beanie was Russ's ex-girlfriend Red. Red had simply said that Cry and hers exchange was just friendly flirting, but someone showed Russ evidence that it was more than just friendly flirting. Cry actually wanted someone from the late night community to draw them having sex together while Cry and Cheyenne were also still dating. Russ would eventually break up with Red and would start to have feelings for Angel, another person that they all used to stream with. Cry would purposely have Angel on stream with them to make Russ stream because Cry knew Russ's feelings feelings for Angel. Scott would also go on stream and say this about the situation. I'm, I'm okay with people talking about it, so if you guys want to talk about it, it's cool. Sure, Swish. I, I will talk about what I knew and I didn't know. Uh, I knew that he exchanged um, sexual text with a 16-year-old while he was 22, I think. Um, and I saw a screenshot of that. That's pretty much the extent of that, that creepy shit that I knew. Uh, I found out a whole bunch more that... Uh, yeah, I'm I, I'm going to let him say it, obviously, because I, I'm pretty sure he is going to. And it feels like it's not my place because uh, it, it's not fair to victims either to say that shit, you know, so that, that's between him and them. And I'm not going to say that. But um, yeah, it, it, it was it was uh, it was something we we thought was, you know, fucked up, but. I don't know. It was like it wasn't enough to lose all of our jobs and our friendship over. So we, you know, we gave him shit and that was fucking gross. But that that's all I kind of knew of it. It just I saw that one screenshot and that was it. I didn't know more shit came of it. Um, And uh, so it was except I want to say acceptable. It was something we had to just sort of try to move past or be homeless. So it was a really, really tough position to be in. But then we found out way more shit or at least I did recently I don't know what everyone else knew but then I found out way more shit recently that uh is not even worth the stability of income to protect anymore so as Russ yeah, he's I mean he's taking it pretty hard too it, it's it's shitty it's a shitty thing for everybody like you, you guys you guys gotta understand he, he doesn't he's not gonna talk to us about this shit if it, you know, if it seems like scummy like that, you, you got to realize, even though we were his friends, he, he's not going to just, hey, guys, I, you know, I was messaging underage people today. He's not going to share that shit with us. 
Like, there were people, like, accusing here and there, but I don't know, like, I never saw any proof until, uh, the other day, so. Do I genuinely think Cry has changed from that? I don't know. Cry has been on a very, very strange mood change the past couple of weeks. I don't know if he changed medicines or something, but he has been, uh, he's been very strange the past couple of weeks. And, uh, I'm not sure what happened see th that's the thing there are a there are absolutely genuine victims in this scenario 100 percent. i will in no way ever minimize that and the fault is very clear what's the initial thought process dude the, the fact that we all had to find out from the video that he uploaded and not actually him like i don't know how he thought it was a good idea to not contact us first before releasing that shit that is that is so fucked up <laughs> Finding out the way everyone else found out is not, not a good thing. But, um, recently that Cry did uh, way more, way more sh shitty stuff than I knew. As Russ, I mean he's he's hanging in there. We're all in various levels of hanging in there. So. Yeah, look, crazy. Russ has been a, a victim of a lot of shit. I, I feel especially bad for that dude, and I completely understand. You know. Right. Without late night, Russ is not going to have any income, so I understand he has to take shit. Like, it makes perfect sense, and it's completely justifiable for him to have to deal with that shit. It's weird, like, I talked to a lot of people the other day, and, and uh, it's like, a lot of people had different pieces of information, like, different pieces of the puzzle. And then, like, <laughs> information would be exchanged with all the people involved, and then one person would go, wait, he, he did what? And then that person would go, yeah, I knew that. Like, there's so many weird puzzle pieces of, like, not knowing... What did Cry do to Russ exactly? Um, he... I guess this is in the open. I don't have to not talk about it. Um, he fucked around with Russ's uh, girlfriend. And um, Russ was basically forced to accept that because, you know... I mean, Cry was his friend first off and, you know, he... It was his job too. He can't just leave his job, you know? Eventually, the late night crew would disband just a day after Cry's video. And Cry would also write this on Twitter. Cry would state that his last video was recorded during a manic episode and that it wasn't a good apology. He said that he would upload a follow up video, but it's now 2021, a year after all of this has happened, and he still has not updated his viewers. Cry was someone that let the power of his channel go to his head, manipulating not just his friends, but also his fans. Cry's channel catered towards a younger audience, which is really messed up with Cry's allegations, seeing that he obviously preyed on younger fans. Cry would eventually be banned off of Twitch and is yet to upload on YouTube. There has been some rumors floating around that Cry was being investigated by the FBI, and that was the reason why he has been so silent, but it's really hard to actually know what's going on with Cry not updating anybody. Cry did a very messed up thing, and even if he does come back, he probably will get criticized off of YouTube because we have all seen how badly he takes criticism. I will be linking the mega subreddit in the description of this video if you want to learn more about every victim involved. This has been the rise and fall of Cryotic. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to never miss any future uploads. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.